YouTube family, we are back with another film room session. In this film room session, I'm just going to be different. I'm just going to be showcasing to you guys why I love NBA 2K25. I love the game. Oh, I love it so much that I'm just, I, I, I was just jumping for joy, clicking my heels to showcase this gameplay to y'all of why I love it and point out every reason why I love it. So, so let's, let's watch this gameplay together. And for those of you who are new to film room, how it goes is I'll show the play in its purity at first, then I'll run it back and break down the thought process and the way that I was feeling during the live play. Now, when we start it off, right, we just gonna start it off automatically. This is a random rec game. And I know, I said I wasn't gonna play with randoms, but quite frankly, everybody's fell apart. The Everything's fell apart. Everything's fell apart. Everything that I had planned, this year with my previous team has fell apart and as sad as it seems at the end of the day sometimes things just have to happen for you to find a way to elevate and work through it and get on to something new and more beneficial to you so because it's a lot of random works going on i had to go into random right and i took my guard because well every time you go into random wreck you get the worst guards to ever exist so I have to play the guard position and playing the guard position with randoms leave you in these type of situations where you don't even have a proper power forward. You have a three and D wing playing the four. So we're in here with our random wreck. And uh, now I don't know if y'all pay attention very well, but the reason why I had to remake builds and the build that we seen in, in the second film room session or the center build that's all around is because this lineup that you see here this is a pro-am lineup as you can see it, look at that any smart person knows that's bam out of bio at the three who is a two-way board hunting stretch at the three you got a defensive playmaker at the four and an inside the arc maestro at the five you know what that means three of these guys have rebound chaser on gold minimum it probably goes gold hall of fame legend or legend gold hall of fame or maybe all hall of fame or all legend who who knows right then you got him you already know what this is this is the uh spammer everybody on this court can steal the ball probably outside of him and well this is just this is what your typical pro-am team would look like but do we get pro-am teams in pro-am yes but you also get pro-am teams in rec and the in the key difference between a pro-am team in rec and a five and a team of five in a rec is what i'd call implementing uh comp tactics and we spoke about that why i've been an advocate about that and, and the frustration that is shown because we are you're in this mode doing things that take place in the other modes yet yet you're in this mode so what does that say now if you look at the stats here you can already see he averages 26 points so he's most likely the offense and then you would see ball handle and logically speaking you would say wow with a 98 ball handle this is probably an iso demon but he's not with a 98 ball handle and a 95 three and of course his steal is higher than his his steal is higher than a lot of other attributes but only in this game but logically thinking logically thinking you're like man 98 ball handle dude is an iso god but the more illogical you think in 2k25 the more successful you'll be the more illogical you think in 2k period the more successful you'll be because this game does not the foundation of this game is not built on logic it is built on illogical movements illogical combinations illogical animations it's the reason why this game thrive because this game penalizes smart people or logical people but glorifies and boosts up and enables stupid and illogical people to thrive and that's the balance so the 98 ball handle will use multiple screens in this game me i'm logical i'm a point guard i'm six foot two so what would i do give myself the highest pass accuracy you can receive ball handle to give yourself unpluckable on gold perimeter defense because you're a point guard you know point guards are prominent positions in this game so it would be good to defend them and speed with ball because you're six two you need speed all logical things right here but here we go all 
Okay, now reason number one why I love 2K25 the most is the fact that bad defense can always be rewarded because of the game. So here we go. Tip off, fresh off a of tip off. What is probably the most ideal shot you would think as the first shot in the game? A layup, right? You would say, wow, a layup would be the most ideal way to get it started. What would probably be the most I second, I second ideal way to get a shot? Probably say a corner three. Why? Because it's the same distance as a mid-range shot but it's worth three points. So what do we start the game off with? A corner three ball in the corner. Gold, versatile, visionary, Hall of Fame dimer. He has a 92 mid range, which gives him a lot of badges that should boost his shot. My passing plus his badges plus the shot selection and where it is on the court should be beneficial. But we get a miss. From the miss, this is the second reason why I love the game. Because out of every miss that happens in 2K, somebody can get up the court easily and get a bucket. Because, you know, it reminds me of watching NBA games. It reminds me of when you watch an NBA game and they score so much because every rebound, the rebounder is just launching it up the court to whoever's leaking. And they're just getting easy layups and dunks all game long. It's actually a marvelous game to watch. Make sure you tune into the NBA this season because you'll see it fully from every team. Every team you'll see it. Now this is the play we get it right. This is the play we run it right back. The random has the ball. He probably could have threw this into a dunk. But I guess he played it safe and gave it to me. And, uh, well, let's see here. Do you see what's forming? Now, people always say, I paid for the game. I could play it my way. You're absolutely right. You can. But the same way you want to play the game your way and you paid for it, I have the free will and free speech to tell you that you're garbage and to tell you that there's five of y'all in this game with meta builds inside the most casual mode you'll find in 2k25 in a zone in passing lanes look at where i'm standing and look at what's going on reason number three why i love 2k because you can walk into a casual mode not equipped for anything that you not equipped for anything comp like yet get into a comp game you don't have adequate teammates adequate builds adequate animations equipped you're just trying to figure out something else that might work outside of the preordained meta or the ordained meta that's already been placed amongst this game but yet you have to come in here and deal with not just one team of five but almost every game you play gonna have a team of five and then they're setting up in comp like modes but luckily we've been down this road before a long time so you kick it to the corner and you get a wide open three now the game has begun and see one of the reasons why i invested in a 95 pass in my most recent point guard build that i've created is because 94 pass 95 pass feels the equivalent to the 91 pass from last year's 2k you see 85 89 90 91 92 those passes are good quite frankly yes but 95 gives you access to versatile visionary on gold versatile visionary is the equivalent to needle threader and logically thinking with the way the passing lanes are in this game the way steals are in this game if i can speed up my pass and get my pass faster I should have more success, which I have been having. And so the 95 pass kicks in here. When I throw that pass, he gets caught in quicksand because of my pass. The pass is on target, on time, in the pocket. So the center just has an easy shot, catch and shoot in the corner. Green.
Now on this play, this is just randoms activating. And when you get a random Randy to activate, there's really not much you can do. You're always going to be at a disadvantage. Now, if you keep in mind here, we have two guys in the backcourt. Now, keep in mind this upcoming NBA season and the previous seasons that you have spent your time watching, you will always, you'll always see defenders in the backcourt. Always, especially two of them. It'll always be at least two defenders in the backcourt of every NBA game you'll ever watch. So, once the ball finally gets inbounded, I forward to pass up because they're in a 2-3 zone. Um, it's a very realistic defense. Two guys in the backfield just hushing at the ball in the middle of his own. Center's just standing in the back. So I just do the logical thing. I throw the ball to my shooting guard. Smell you later. Smell you later then proceeds to shoot a drifting three-pointer. Now, I'm not going to accredit this all to him because 2K uh, has implemented a non-stop dribble move that you can't stop. Even when you let go of your controller, your player is still doing something else prior to you being able to shoot. So he got uh, sucked into shooting his drifter and he missed. And then uh, he quit. Yeah, you see that? Smell you later, quit the match. He quit the match. Then the next thing that I spoke about, about the outlets, everyone's just leaking after one shot, because we see that a lot. And people, we really don't get back to our guy and miscommunication happens and then there's a dunk. But I really love playing an NBA game that really, really reflects the NBA. Matter of fact, I realized that this game is more reflective of all stages of basketball outside of the NBA. You see, because the defense that is successful in this game is defense that is very successful in grade school, elementary school, uh, a JV, varsity, AAU basketball, where literally you play one of them prominent teams in, in your division and their defensive method is press the ball in the backcourt, trap, hound the defense because typically in the, in the younger modes or younger stages of basketball careers, people can't dribble as well, usually can't dribble with their opposite hand, usually panic under pressure, all that other stuff. And so that type of defense is successful. And then in NBA 2K, the real, the simulation basketball game where everyone is named MP and we're all the same player and we're all in the NBA and we're pretty much a 99 overall, can't get past that defense either. So we're technically playing NBA high school or AAU 2K25 because implements and defenses from AAU and from a kid set circuit, 16 16U, 17U, high school, all of that, those defensive things actually work better in the NBA than it does back then because that is always around the NBA. NBA players love just being uh, in the backcourt pressing and literally just gambling on everything that there is to gamble on and being successful. So keep that in mind. Now here on this possession, you can clearly see the zone is fully set in and playing zone in 2K25 is already just a OK, but whatever it happens, it's meta and having a competent team that knows how to break the zone is also non meta. So that's why people run it, because typically it's non meta. People don't know how to break zones. And even if you try to simplify the rule and simplify the reasonings behind a rule the most, people still don't execute the plan properly. And ever since last year, when we started with Inside the Mind, I spoke about a five outing a two, three zone. If you five out any two, three zone, you're gonna force that defense to play some type of hybrid zone or man. The two, three, they, the formation of the two, three will not be able to stand if you're five out it it just wouldn't the numbers don't match up in order to match the numbers they have to go to a spread defense which then revolves around 
soon as somebody cuts, somebody's gonna let him go and drop down and then it's gonna form back into a two, three. But the moment it's a spread offense, they're gonna have to spread their defense just to match up. But on this possession, uh, we are struggling to do that. As you can see, they're fully set in. The AI is AIing, so he's just roaming all over the place. This guy does not see that his corner could be open. He can get anywhere in between here right now and put some pressure on the defense because the center is already on this side. It's three to two. So if you draw the line up the middle of the court, look at the advantage. You see what I'm saying? But once again, when you logically think about this game, you put yourself at a disadvantage. So you die, you have to illogically think. So now the ball just, he, I mean, he's just moving all over the place. Finally, the ball resets back to the top. And the moment it resets at the top, I take advantage of the movement. Because now that we are basically all set up in a five out set, one, two, three, four, five, all spread out, now the reaction has to happen. When the ball came to the top and he spread out to the thing, to the, to the corner, and now we're in a spread offense, everyone has to be accounted for. And what do you know? As the center has to get out of the paint to go all the way to the other side from standing on this box to get to this box to account for this guy who's in his space, the center can now cut back door and all I have to do is throw it on target and on time, which I do. He gets past his guy and it's a wide open layup. But the logic basketball format and playing that I try to implement in this game with my teammates and with you fails more times than not. Now I put this play on here just to showcase this is the typical offense that is ran and this is the usefulness of a player like 55 because 55 is actually uh, trash. You know, 55 doesn't score in this entire game. He doesn't even get 10 rebounds. So he doesn't do anything outside of just getting cardio and being annoying. But I press up on the guard and once again, I press up on the guard. He has 98 ball handle. So I just try to crowd him. But 2K takes out the badge to help you crowd people in the backcourt, AKA 94 feet. So now I'm caught and he's left riding and then I'm trying to recover and look at the space that's given. So as I'm trying to recover, the center sets the screen late. Now I thought that my power forward or whoever was guarding this guy was going to play the other side, but this is what happens when you play with randoms and not teammates. And so I literally get caught on the screen and he's wide open for three with a 95 rating and his money pieces. And then I get defensive breakdown because, well, I'm just trash. Now we circle to the number one reason why I love this game. Everything working out. He's already playing the passing lane because who doesn't play passing lanes in this game? I mean, everybody can, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder could play this game right now and get steals just by telling them to hit the square button. If they hit the square button all game, they'll get a steal. So he's trying to predict a pass. So I throw it to the wide open wing, wide open wing. All of Fame Dimer, versatile visionary on gold. I even have takeover on level two right now, which has boosted my pass accuracy and, and I believe ball handle or some things like that. And we get a nice brick. Then the game comes up to court. Their offense starts to run. I pick him up at half court. And I mean, he's setting a screen at the E in the wreck. But I guess that's on me because since I'm picking up that far, I'm forcing him to set the screen higher which in turn logically speaking should be an advantage for the defense especially if your non-shooting big is literally all the way at half court setting the screen and that means the person defending that should literally just be standing foul line extended or up even more to stop him from turning the corner but you see the way i guard the pick and roll for my guard 
I don't get that same benefit when I'm at guard. So I have to literally fight through screens, over or under, and try to stay attached to the body. But then he turns the corner, brushes off me, and gets the dunk. So there's an importance in everything, and hopefully over time you guys will see the importance when I display it through gameplays. And that's 2K25 at his best. Me bringing the ball up, literally just trying to set the offense up, just trying to be patient. And it's one, two, three, four defenders there, and I'm just trying to stand at half court and wait for my team to catch up. Looking back at this, I and when I play guard now, I should probably wait in the backcourt until everybody gets in front and then start to bring the ball up. But I rushed, and because I rushed, Look at this. Look, 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 look that nice steal animation right there. Look at that. Let, 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 let's, let's try to seek it back. Can we seek it back, please? Can, can we seek it back? Can we just go back a little bit, please? No, let's go back. I want to just go back a little bit. I just want to go back a little bit. I just want to go back to the place that we were here. Here we go. Now, I had to avoid this reacher. I had to put the ball in his hand. And then he's trailing full sending. And then I kind of avoided him. But his back was turned. You see? His back was turned a little. I can, I, I cannot slow it down to bring it back. But his back was essentially turned a little bit, and and because of that, sorry, sorry. Essentially, my back was turned. I got ripped, and then we got the patented step back jumper. Um, that is the only thing that people can score on. On this play, I'm literally just showcasing you more of my uh, 2K25 frustration and why I love the game. Because there's nothing better than you start to feel a team on momentum, you finally break down a defense, you catch them laps, you make them pay beautiful corner pass. Nobody's there. A AI player. The AI player now. The AI player is open in the corner. And the AI can't even make the shot oh not everybody makes every shot i've seen nba players miss wide open shots so i like the fact that wide open shots don't go in in this game i feel like when you feel that way it's because you play defense like this and this defense that type of logic and 2k allowing this to happen makes your gaming experience fun because now it's like Oh, he can't shoot, so I'm going to back up even more and play worse defense and go double the ball. Yes, that's a 3 and D wing in a corner. Yes, it's an AI, but he can't shoot. He going to miss more than he going to make. So let's just go double the ball. We don't get the bucket. Now we got to get back on offense. They throw a lob. Nobody picks it up, but their team does. And then they're just double team and he finally throws it down there and he gets the standing dunk Now, on this possession, this shows another reason why I love the game. Because defense and positioning no, no, doesn't matter in this game either. It's just a matter of what flailing animation could I get to try to get the ball. So as you can see, when I inbound the ball, and I'm starting to run up the court, look, we got one and two right here. They right there, and they're just reaching. And I get the foul call. Cool. We go ahead and start to inbound again. They are full sending up. And you want and you want to know why they're full sending up they're full sending up to the inbounds pass because they are aware that this game is designed for you not to be able to inbound the ball in a proper timing or manner and they can steal the ball throughout that so they're gonna come and press the ball every inbound 
Inbounding is one of the hardest things to do in this game, and that's why I love it. So when I finally get the ball across half court, they're full sending. It's, look, look, raging wolves, ravering wolves. I mean, just, I mean, look at them. Just look. Look how many times the square button is hit in this moment. Look. Look, look, look. So finally, we start to spread out a little bit. And so I'm going to cut. When I cut, the center's going to respect it or I'm going to get a layup. Center respects it. And look at what he gives up. The tone setting shot from film room session two. The mid range shot. Nobody's guarding it. It's always going to be open. It's open. He makes it. We get a good offensive possession. Now, on this possession, I put this possession in the game uh, for one to two reasons. One, the 98 ball handle is used uh, in pick and roll situations. So we cut him off going baseline, he stepped back, I'm getting screened again. The AI does nothing on screens. So you already know this is gonna be a three, but I do a good job of recovering, getting a hand up, getting challenger to pop up. But look, do we see this here? Now at the beginning of the game, I noticed I pointed out to you that they had Bam out of bio at the three. And when people wonder and ask questions of why I have to make different a different center build for pro am or comp gameplay, if you notice, there are three individuals crashing into the paint right now for an offensive rebound, an offensive one. The three, the four, and the five. Look at the AI nowhere to be found look at our small forward he's trying to get a leak out bucket the shooting guard is the only one crashing as an ai and the center it's actually high up in the air he's the one look the center is jump he's off the ground jumping for the ball but guess who gets it one of them which then they kick it back to the three-point line he misses and look there are three people crashing again so imagine being a six foot nine all around basketball playing center with a 93 defensive rebound on Hall of Fame rebound chaser, right? But every game you're playing inside the Pro-Am arena or a comp setting consists of three 90, 80, 80 plus rebounders who are all crashing at one time. It's one against three. Who do you think is going to get that rebound? And once again, the shot is up. The AI finally got a box out, but that's the shooting guard there in the paint with two high rebounders and it's just one rebounder. The small forward is leaking. They get another one. And then they finally get the three point shot. That is why you have to go to the meta just to be able to finish off a possession. Ah, yes, uh, this one is just here just to showcase the love for the game. Get screened at half court again, so I'm in scramble mode because the 98 handle is not good enough to be able to get a shot. So I have to go through screens with pick dodger on gold. That doesn't work. So I go through the screen and I finally get there. Put a hand up, make him fall. I get good shot contests. He's on the ground. It's a green. <laughs> we was able to get it back on this possession. But once again, in every NBA game I watch, this is just the base defense. Two guys in the backcourt and literally just take and the NBA really just take two passes, just get the ball open to an open man, and it's just a rather, it's a matter of is they gonna make the shot or not. You know, I when the NBA starts to play like this this season, 
And I want I want to see the percentages that NBA players are shooting on the shot attempts that we take in this game. I want to see your best defenders at the top in the backcourt all game long, leaving a three on two on the other side. And I want some of the best shooters in the game to be wide open the entirety of the game, not just one quarter, not just one play, the entirety of the game. And I want to see what the percentage is that they will shoot. I just want to see it for science. This is 2K25 at its finest. Once the community finds a move that the only way you can guard it, the only way you can guard it is literally sitting on the move. No, it's not a it's not a reactionary type of thing. It's literally you have to literally know that it's coming or you won't be able to react to it. Once they find the move that you are not allowed to react to, they will abuse the move. That move happens to be this step back here. This step back right here that he's doing. Look, it stuns the AI, backs you up to the three point line. And look at that, that was a standstill jumper. That was a standstill step back. No momentum. He just was standing still and did a step back, froze the AI, created space. No reaction, wide open three. He bricked it. Now, as we try to bring the ball up to court, what happens? 2K25, the steal is there. Still is there. Now he does the step back, the same exact step back. Look, got me looking at the baseline. I don't even know where to go. Crossed me over, but I recovered. Tried to get a hand up. Now I don't defend it. The shot like that almost all game. Sometimes I get good shot contests. Sometimes challenger pops up. Sometimes it doesn't. And you still get greened on. But once they find a move that is hard to react to, best believe that's the move you're gonna get. And it's not their fault because every year it's always the same move. There's gonna be some step back or some behind the back that creates more space than the defense can even react to and it's gonna get people off. But I've come to just learn to accept that. That is what the game is. The game is never going to give a logical, smart, position-based defender the advantage over an offensive player. The only defenders that's gonna thrive in this game are people who just spam the button, the steal button with a high steal rating. The adrenaline bars, they're just there for design now. Okay, they're there for design. They don't work. They don't, it doesn't happen. Um, once you get, once you run out of the adrenaline bars, you still have the ability to launch and or steal shoot and everything in the same way as before. They're just there for design. They're there to make you think that it matters. Ah yes, this is this is an example of well, I, you actually get reason four and five of why I love this game. Uh, reason number four is when. Sometimes you'll throw the AI the ball wide open and they throw it immediately right back to you. Other times you throw the AI the ball and he shoots this. <laughs> he shoots that. Now, we have to get back on defense. We get back on defense. He shoots a drifter. He misses. Probably only shot that because the game didn't allow him to slow down. Then we finally get set. And finally the 98 ball handle gets to go to work. And he working, he working to look at him. He working, he working, he working, he cooking. I'm there, I'm there. Then the beeps, reason number five. The beeps that are happening in your headset and or coming out of your speakers of your monitor or your TV will be beeping and have you thinking the shot clock is about to run out, which it is. But the beeps are not in sync with the time. So in my head, it's beeping, beep, beep, 
beep beep so as you can see i start to put my hand up right here because it's like wow there's one second left the final beep is here this should be shot clock violation but technically it shows you one here but it's 1.8 so i put my hand up he gets by me and shoots a drifting three a pull up three shifty shooter probably gone legend because he had he has a 95 three money pieces Once again, reason number six that I love this game is I love the way the pass and uh, the pass and the defensive animations work. Now I'm trying to throw this ball to the the wing guy here, the, the triangle guy here, and this guy in the middle is literally just in the middle, just hitting square, hit square. The ball got tipped on a crane. It's like, oh, that's a cross court pass. That's bad defense. I mean, that's a bad pass. And my rebuttal to that would be, well, if he's standing here guarding this guy and I'm throwing it across to this guy with where my pass rating is and where I'm throwing it to, I should get the benefit of the doubt because my passing is probably higher than his steal. His steal is probably a 91. My pass is a 95. I invested, but nonetheless, we don't, they don't get the steal. Now we get to reset. I get the ball. And what happens? The defense collapses. I already am pre-reading this when I catch the ball. So I throw it to the right guy. Make the right basketball play. Open corner three-pointer. And the defense gets rewarded again. <laughs> but we get it back. They throw the ball out of bounds. Now this is when I get into my into my bag here. This is a, a, a normal crisp possession. Got to get the rebound because that that's the number one defensive goal is to get the stop, secure the rebound to end the possession. Then I bring the ball up to court and look how many times number fifteen hit square. Look at one. He already hit it all before uh, before I paused it. Then I throw somebody open. Good wrap around. I play off the AI. The AI is cutting back door. He's accounting for the AI, so I get that pass there quick. He's in no man's land. The center's technically open too, cause look at look at this. But I throw it to a corner three ball, and he makes it. And it's just a beautiful offensive possession. But once again, the defense gets rewarded more than the offense can ever deliver. We should be beating this team by now. A lot of open shots that. I've created for my teammates in this game. I've not went in and you don't see them all because I only showed a few, but we should be winning this game. Ah, yes. This possession showcases the aggravation that it is playing guard in this game, and which is why uh, uh, a few folks are starting to dwindle away from it. Because you get this, all you're trying to do is just bring the ball up and initiate the offense. And I'm, I'm, these film sessions are very good for not only you, the viewer, who are maybe trying to learn or see things, but also me, the player. Because I realized that I just need to slow the game down even more. See, I barely hit sprint anyway, but I need to slow it down even more by literally catching the ball and standing still, allowing these de offensive players to get past half court before I even start to move. 
that's what I need to start doing. I'm realizing that in this film session here. But after I get through getting hounded for the potential of a steal, we're finally able to set the offense up, which is a wide open shot. An on time, on target pass from a 95 pass with Hall of Fame Dimer to a 3 ND wing at the wing as an AI on a wide open three point shot. And we break. So then I have to get back because the greatest thing about this game is every miss leads to a fast break bucket. So I have to get back to try to defend. I have a 67 steal and I have caught the ball. Meanwhile, people are having 91 to 96 steal. You think they have that steal to have moments like this? No, they have that steal to just be able to illogically hit the steal button for the entirety of the possession in hopes of getting rewarded with a steal or a poke. I put 67 steal because I said I have bronze on it. I have bronze interceptor. With bronze interceptor, I should be able to catch illogical passes when I'm in position to catch them, as we see here. I catch the ball, I throw it up the court. He shoots it. Now I got to get back again because the shot was blocked and they're off to the races. And so I have to get back again. My 67 in good positioning, I steal the ball again. And look it, does he get back to guard the corner? No. What does he do? He stands at half court and he begins to reach because he knows that this game will allow him to steal that ball more times than they won't. This time, they didn't allow him to steal the ball. And because of that, I was able to kick it to where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be here. He threw the pass from right here and threw the turnover. He's supposed to stand right here again. But no, what did he do? He blitzed the ball to try to come rip it because the game wants him to get the steal. But he did not get the steal and the same place he was supposed to be is where the offense initiates. And then they give up a three. So in the very rare occasions where the defense does not get rewarded, the game is bad. But you see, the game becomes very good when the defenders leave their guys to gamble and still get rewarded. That's when the game becomes good. Put that in there to show y'all, man, I'll be getting cooked. I'll be getting flat out cooked. He came there. He went into the corner. Yeah, he's in the corner. There's three defenders there. That guy is literally reaching where he's dribbling. No steal, but that's okay because, you know, steals are always one-sided. They'll never find a team that'll have the same amount of steals both ways. There's always going to be one team that don't get steals and the other team that gets all the steals. You just have to hope that you're on the all the steal side of the team. So we don't get to steal here. He gets to reset. And then straight from that, I'm trying to recover, get back in front. He hits me with the behind the back. Oh, look at me. Oh, oh boy. I'm defending Casper right now. And he gets the corner three ball. Money pieces. No, that's not a fake video. That's not a fake video. That is a shot attempt that was shot. No time on the shot clock. 11 seconds left in the ball game. In the half. And the quality shot we get is this shot right here. It's a brick. You know what that leads to? You guessed it. A three. Shot selection is a very important thing. It's a very important thing. This game puts you at a disadvantage even if you take a good shot and brick it. That team leaks out. So imagine when you take a bad shot and brick it. 
what that team is going to do. The goal is to try to eliminate all the buffoonery that this game presents. But it's easier said than done. Now here, this is aggravation. This is what frustrates me the most. And it's not, it's not the game doing, it's teammates doing. A lot of times, and I'm sure some of you out there can relate, whether you play with randoms or you play with people that you know, or friends that you have gained along your years of playing 2K, sometimes people get into a frustration state. And when you get frustrated, you start to do illogical things. I get frustrated and I start to run up the court, start to sprint up the court or try to speed the game up because I'm frustrated and in turn it, it, it backfires. Then you have others who decide to not only turn off who to guard, but then start to just go after the ball. They ball chase, pause. They chase the ball in hopes to get a steal and messes up everybody else's defensive positioning and or rotation responsibility so here the small forward is just chasing the ball his guy inbounds the ball and runs straight to the corner he never ever goes to that corner instead the center now has to react to this guy the center goes out there gives up a wide open three because there's nobody to get the rebound and guess what nobody gets the rebound the small four once again is he never even got over there back to his man nor did he box out the man that he was picking up instead he starts to leak out so what does that leave his guy gets a redo he still never gets to the corner they made the wrong path and the, he still never got there then by the time he get there it's green that type of frustration that that type of style of play that happens is the most infuriating thing because the game itself is already infuriating by itself. But then when you get teammates who get frustrated and then they just start playing outside of the norm and just start chasing the ball and trying to gamble for steals and then they're giving up open threes, it makes me irate. But what can I say? What can I do? I can't control somebody else's actions. These are things that are out of my control. The same defense that we score on the same defense we score on the chasing the ball the blitzing the ball the the defense where they are literally leaving their man and go guard somebody else's man in hopes to get a steal and you end up getting the wide open shot in three you return that same defense to the team that is running it and guess what you give up the three <laughs> The goal is to stop somebody from doing what they want to do while you do what you always do. Not stop what they want to do and then do what they want to do and then give up what you're trying to stop. Nonetheless, let's go on to the next play. Now, what did I just say? Huh? What did I just say? What is the defense that I just said that they like to run? That's right. They've been blitzing the ball all game. You've been scoring off of the defense that they've been playing. Then you're going to start to play that defense. And what's the result? The same result that we get. A wide open shot in the corner. Green. But see... I think logically about the game. And that's my disadvantage, is logically thinking. Having a mind that can think logically, that's the disadvantage. Don't you love it when you get the offense 
the perfect AI offense. Shooting guard AI with a three under his name. Three under his name. On the wing. All of Fame Dimer. 95 pass. Good pass popped up. Good pass. Good pass popped up. And the AI doesn't even hit the shot. Then you have to go back and guard two on one. And does the AI run to the corner? Nope. It's my responsibility, apparently, to run from where I was standing to that corner. While the AI, I guess, is supposed to run to the paint. Nobody runs out there and we give up another three. Now we are down 20 points. It was once four. It was once 31 to 35. It is now 35 to 55. We scored four points. And you know what's frustrating about this is the fact that the AI couldn't shoot the catch and shoot open one. But what he does shoot is a go to shot step back three pointer. And it goes in. You can't make it up. If you were to tell the stories of this game, if you were to tell them stories, people wouldn't believe it. They would have to see it to believe it. Now let's review this possession. We're starting off with the handy dandy. Steal. Can't inbound the ball. Now we have to sit here and just deal with all of this. That's kind of he he takes one three, right? Then they get the rebound. They get the rebound. Okay, now we have to redo it again. Okay, pump fake. Step back. Green. Stop. Three. Boom. He miss again. And go match the first quarter. There's three of them in the paint for the offensive rebound. Three. Now you may be wondering, how did Mam out of bio the three get this offensive rebound when everything was just standing at the corner? Well, if you look at Bam Adebayo's matchup, he's at half court. That's right, he's at half court. 3 and D wing AI is in the paint with a rebounder, with the center who's in the paint with a rebounder, and then you, with guarding another rebounder, is trying to get some buckets. So what happens? We don't finish the defensive possession. We get the miss, but we don't get the stop. Because now they get the rebound, and they get a second chance, and a third chance. And so, he kicks it back out. We have to square back up. We squaring up. We squaring up. He shoots that. Finally, we get the stop. Then we don't get the turnover. Then we push into him, make him freeze, and then we get the corner. Two. After you put in all that work and you get the stop, you finally get the stop and then you get the rebound. You play defense, you get the rebound and all you want to do is start your offensive possession. But what happens? What happens? 2K25 happens. 
You get the rebound. Everything is going fine. The ball is already going. The camera just turned around. Now it has to turn back around. Then he gets the block. Just for them to be crashing again and getting another rebound. I love the game because of that. I love the game that we can just get ripped right after rebounds. And the camera view don't even know what to do when they already scoring. I love it. It's a really good game. It is. Nonetheless, though, even with the way that the game has been going and how it's been progressing, it is 4.58 left in the fourth quarter, and we are only down 12. Which is an attest to how bad the other team is that we're playing, which would also explain why they're in this mode here, because they probably have went to other modes and the game's not the same for them. So they found the game mode that works for them, and, and now that's it. Like this is where they stay. They're dwell amongst these grounds here. And so everybody blitzes the ball because that's just the game. But luckily I was able to hone the ball, kick it to the wide open guy who can make mid range shots. But that same AI with the three and D wing cannot make threes. That's all right. We got to play. This is the other favorite thing about 2K that I like. When you throw a pass and somebody just gets to tip it, because you, you see, they can control their hands as far as putting them up. But you can't control the type of pass that your player throws to the man you want to throw it to. You see, they have a pass option for bounce pass and lead and lob pass and normal pass, right? X, triangle, and circle, right? or a b and y for xbox players right but see when you put that icon up the game now decides what type of pass you're going to throw to the man now ideally with a 95 pass you see we've seen players with a 95 pass we've seen players but not even i don't even want to say a 95 pass but we've seen players stand in this corner right here and they throw this ball they they outstretch their left hand and they whip it down the baseline, across the baseline, to the opposite corner for a three. We've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen Ginobili do it. We've seen Curry do it. We've seen LeBron do it. We've seen Rondo do it. Right? So it's a pretty normal pass, but only good passers can make that pass. So you would think a 95 pass does that. No, what does it do? He tries to throw an overhead pass with a dude with the hands up. We get the ball back. What does he do? He throws another overhead pass. Again. To the same guy. Throws another overhead pass. This is why I love the game. Because when you put investment into things, they actually work. And we lose. We go on to lose. We go on to lose. And Bam out of bio had 15 points. This the Pro Ford had 10. Center had zero. I mean, the center's pretty much useless, but he's a 91. But they got 98, 99, 99, 99, right? 99 everything. He's red, and the rest, uh, uh, these two are silver, and and there, and he's gold, and then he's silver too. But this goes to show that you know, this is just a lovely game, and I really love it. And I'm doing my best to not complain about anything anymore because, well, the more you complain about things, the more people want to uh, 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 display how trash you are at the game. So I'm not gonna complain about anything anymore. I'm just gonna be so grateful and happy and lovely at the fact that I can walk into the mode with bad randoms. They become AIs. And we're going up against a full team here that, you know, just, just gets the benefit of the doubt. They get the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, all good things happen. Uh, I had a, a, what I would call a, a pretty decent game you know I, I would call my game pretty decent um i've on, I, I only had one turnover with all the uh buffoonery that was uh, uh portraying in this game and how i slowed the game down i only had one turnover so i technically improved yet 
it's still not enough. We lost by 13. We had an AI who shot two of seven. Uh, we had uh, AI who shot two of five. I didn't shoot any. I couldn't get any shots uh, up for three. And then they shot 32 of them things and hit 13 of them. And they had nine steals. We had five steals. So I told you that you'll never see a game where the steals are even. Somebody's going to uh, beat you in steals. And, you know, we just AI got lit up and yeah we 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 really enjoyed our game and i really love this game and i'm really looking forward to to maximizing my opportunity on this game and progressing and playing this game like no other for the entirety of the year but if you would like to see me play other games and you're a far cry fan series person you can go follow my other channel where we're building the foundation of playing far cry and then we're progressing to different games but if you like 2k and you enjoy these type of videos this is where you stay leave a like leave a comment and be prepared for the next film room session or the next 2k a discussion video but if you want to see me play other games then click that link in the description to go to my other channel and watch me play far cry 3 as we progress through that series and until next time just know your boy loved this game he loves it like no other this is his life. It's Chris Jones is signing out.